Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and Module 4, Drivers of Reactions. We started in the first video looking at the difference between exothermic and endothermic reactions. Now we're going to apply that to a couple of different situations. And the first situation we're going to look at are dissociation reactions or dissolutions. So the first one we want to look at is sodium hydroxide. So when sodium hydroxide dissolves in water, it dissociates into its ions, sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And during this process, energy can be either absorbed by the system or released uh, by the system to the surroundings. If two grams of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in 150 mils of water, and we're told that the temperature rises by 3.5 degrees Celsius, then we can calculate the molar heat of solution for the sodium hydroxide. The formula that we want to use is this one, the MCAT formula. Q is the energy absorbed or released. M is the mass. C is the specific heat and T is the change in temperature. The most important thing about these is they must relate to the same substance. So what we have is the mass of water, the specific heat of water, and you will be given this value in your data sheet, and the change in temperature of the water and we're going to convert it into Kelvin which is easy because it's a change. So once we do this we can do our calculations. We know that because the density of water is one gram per mil uh, that 150 mils will be equivalent to 150 grams. Now I'm going to work through these exercises with numbers that I will give you. Obviously on your data sheet you'll need to look at what the units are for the specific heat. I'm going with 4.18 today, which is joules per gram per Kelvin. So as long as I keep all of these in these units, then I'm okay. And the change in temperature is 3.5. It's gained 3.5 degrees C. And because when we're talking about a change in the temperature, then because the Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale go up by the same amount, even though they start and end at different values, the difference is the same. This gives me a value of 2,194 joules. Now I'm going to convert this into kilojoules and do that sort of straight away. So that's 2.19 kilojoules. Now there's two things I can do with this value. I can find the value per gram or per mole. So we're going to do both. Firstly, the value per gram is equal to 2. 0.19 divided by the 2 grams that we have, which gives us 1.10 rounded up. And whilst I am rounding my numbers here, I would keep all the numbers um, in the calculator. So that's why some of these roundings don't look exactly right. To find out the molar heat of solution, I need to know the molar mass of my uh, solute, which in this case is sodium hydroxide. So I've got sodium 22.99, oxygen, which is 16, and uh, hydrogen, which is 1.008. So my molar mass is 39.998 grams per mole. That means I can now do my final calculation where the Q value is equal to the um, actual uh, number amount of energy per mole by multiplying 1.10 by 39.998 and I end up with a value of 43.89 kilojoules per mole. I can do exactly the same thing for an endothermic dissolution and hopefully what you realize is if this is an endothermic then this time the temperature is going to go down. I can do this by looking at ammonium nitrate NH4NO3 solid dissolving in water, which again is going to dissociate into its ions NH4 plus and NO3 minus. 
I'll work through the same steps again with the same formula. This time, of course, I have the same amount of water. It's still about water, but this time I have a different um, number of degrees and also it's a negative value because the temperature has gone down. So therefore this gonna, value is going to be minus 1.317 uh, kilojoules. Uh, and of course I've divided this whole thing by a thousand in order to get that. So I can now work out my uh, energy per gram by doing minus 1.32 divided by the 5 grams I have this time to give me a value of minus 0 0.26 kilojoules per gram. This time the molar mass is different because it's a different substance. So I've got 14.01 twice. I've got four of the hydrogens and I've got three oxygens. So I've got a molar mass of 80.052 grams per mole. When I multiply that, my Q value is minus 0 0.26 times 80.052, giving me negative 21.08 kilojoules per mole. Now we're just a little over time already on this, but I want to point out a couple of important things to you. When you are dissolving 5 grams of ammonium nitrate in water or 2 grams of sodium hydroxide in water, obviously that's going to increase the mass, but it's also going to change the substance. As far as we can see, the data sheet is only going to provide values for the specific heat of water, not for a range of different solutions. And in fact, the concentration of the solution can slightly change that value as well. So to simplify things, what we want to do is keep you using each of the values as they relate to the same substance. And we're picking for these solutions water. So the mass of the water, the specific heat of the water, and the change in temperature of the water. The other important thing is the sign. The negative sign here indicates that this is an endothermic reaction because the surroundings have decreased in temperature that extra energy has gone into the system to uh, increase the energy of the bonds. This is just one example of how we start out um, look at energy changes and quantifying the energy changes in chemical processes and we'll continue to look at that in upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.